Welcome to Inspired Vinyasa. My name is Sandra, and we are starting on our backs this morning. Go ahead, lay back, hug the knees into the heart. Oh, let out a fabulous sigh. And just rock back and forth, massaging out the low back. Waking up the hips, perhaps. Perfect. Go ahead and set the feet down. Take them to the width of the mat. Knees will tip together. And then lay your hands across your heart so that we can pause here to set our intention for our practice. And then deep inhale through the nose. Loud exhale. So I'm going to separate the knees. I'm going to hug the left knee in. And then hang on to that leg with the right hand. The left hand drops down alongside you. The right foot is going to meander its way over to that hand. We're going to grab on. And then when you're ready, slowly drop the outside of the right leg down to the earth. You want to go slowly because that's an intense quad stretch. So if the leg doesn't want to come down towards the earth or it doesn't want to touch, that's okay. You find that stopping place that's good for you. If the leg just naturally comes down, now I want you to then draw in the left leg tighter. You'll feel that. Deep breath. Let it go. And then just try to relax for a moment. Soften the right leg. I think this has become one of my new favorite stretches. Good job. Okay, go ahead and release the left leg. Let's set that foot down. I'm gonna let go of the right foot and slide that leg through and up on top of my left leg so that we're in supine pigeon. Here we can go ahead and bring that left leg back in again. <clears throat> Now rock back and forth, side to side. We're slowly waking up the body this morning, then we'll dive into our theme. Come back to stillness, straighten that left leg up to the ceiling, flex both feet. And then let's go ahead and make circles with the top ankle. Reflex that foot. Pull the left leg in just a tad closer. Big inhale. Exhale, slowly release that left foot down to the earth. Right foot will follow. Ah, stretch the arms way overhead. Big inhale. Exhale as the arms come down. They're hugging that right knee in. Left hand is going to stay on the right knee. Right arm drops along beside you. The left foot is going to wiggle over to find that hand. Once you've grabbed onto that foot, slowly drop the outside of that leg down. So as you deepen the breath here, try to soften that left leg. Easier said than done, especially if it's tight. You decide if you want to hug the right knee in any closer. And then when you're ready, go ahead and let go of the right leg, set that foot down, let go of the bottom foot, slide that leg up on top for supine pigeon, and we'll re-pick up that right leg. We're gonna rock this out from side to side. And 
and then returning to stillness, send the right leg up to the ceiling, both feet are flexed. Rotate that top ankle. Reflex the foot, draw everything in just a tad closer, big inhale. Exhale, let the right foot come back to the earth. Ah, then the left foot. Stretch the arms overhead, big breath in. Exhale, bring the arms down alongside your body. Prep for bridge. All right, when you're ready, lift on up. Just gonna hold it here for a moment. Imagine you're hugging in on a block, tighten the glutes, lift the hips a tad higher, lengthen out the back of the neck. Do not hold the breath. And then perhaps you should smile maybe. Good job, inhale. Exhale, slowly come down to hover over the mat, don't touch. Inhale, take it back up. Keep squeezing. Exhale, come down about an inch over the mat. Take it back up. You've got it. Follow your breath. So today's theme is kind of about habits. And the interesting thing to me about habits is that we have so many of them, and we often do not even know we are engaged with them. That's how habitual they are. Good job. Come all the way down. Ah, Take the feet forward a little bit. Lift the balls of the feet so you're on your heels. Pull the low back down. Inhale, lift up. Squeeze everything. Hold that as you lower down to hover over the mat. Take it back up. You can even bend at the um, elbows if you want fingers facing straight up, if that gives you a little more support and energy to push down into the ground to lift and release. Still hovering, keep going. All right, last one. Ah, perfect. Straighten out the legs. Let's take the right leg into tree, Vrakasana. And then you can take the arms overhead for a moment and just close your eyes. So, I don't know, think of a habit that you know you have, that you find yourself in the midst of without even realizing you got there. Does that make sense? Okay, stretch out that right leg. Take the left into tree, Rakasana. All right, hopefully you thought of something. Now, I want you to think of one of your good habits. And now, one of your not so good habits. Go ahead, straighten out that left leg. Reach the arms up towards the ceiling. Draw the stomach in. Roll your way all the way up. Perfect. Flex the feet. Take the arms up and hinge forward into a fold. Now I want you to think of if you could change a habit very easily, which one would you pick? Which is the habit, without a doubt, would be your first and foremost, that's the one I would change. And then make your way back up. Draw the feet in, take them wide, use your hands to push you up into malasana. Lengthen the spine. Hands to the earth, straighten out the legs into 
kind of a wide forward fold. And just play around here, add some movement. You could take it in a monkey and let it go. And then let's bend into the knees, roll our way up, take the shoulders up with you, and then back and down. Perfect. Inhale, take the arms up. Take that side bend to the right. And then <clears throat> let's drop that right arm down the leg so we can deepen this out a little bit. Ooh, breathe. Nice stretch on the left side of the body. So We've been waiting to get our deck replaced. The whole thing's rotting. You can fall through in spots. And um, they finally came out to dig three new post holes, right? And when the guy left, he said, now, you know, caution everyone in the family to be careful not to fall into one of these like three foot holes. Go ahead, come back up, release the arm. I'm not gonna lie. My initial thought was who's stupid enough to fall into a three foot hole? Inhale the arms. Take it to the left. Drop that left arm down, find that stretch. Well, prior to those holes being dug, we had a tree there that was uh, crazy and expansive and it sent its branches everywhere. We would trim that thing back like four times a season and its roots equally as crazy. Come on back up, release the arm. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Perfect. Bring the feet in towards each other. <clears throat> we'll see how I do this morning with balance, carpet, and talking all at the same time. Shift your weight into the left foot. Draw that right knee up. Pull it in close. Give it a little squeeze, draw it in more, and set it down. Inhale the arms. Exhale to the heart. Shift the weight into that right foot. Same thing on the left side once you have your balance. Little squeeze, and set that leg down. Inhale the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, monkey. As you release, let's walk this back to downward facing dog. Walk it out here for a moment, and when you're ready, you'll find your stillness. Let's step the feet next to each other. Send the left leg up behind you. And then open, oops, wall behind me. Open that up into flying pigeon. See, that was a good example of habits. I know the wall is there, right? The habit is to let the leg just easily fall backwards into flying pigeon, but yet I just went right there and hit the wall. A couple more breaths. Can you open up that top hip a little more? I'm not gonna lie. A little easier for me because that wall is helping me. <laughs> Top of my foot is on it and I'm able to open up wider without falling over. Okay, slowly release all the way back to dog. Ah, come forward in the plank. Hold it right there, breathe. You know, we have a lot of bad habits in plank too. We should probably discuss that, right? I want you to notice if your hips are not between the shoulders and the ankles. Can you find that straight line without sagging? You need to pull the stomach in, right? Shoulders are over the wrists. Breathe here. Take it back to dog. Right leg up. Open that up. Flying pigeon. Open it up a little bit more. And slowly come back to dog. Ah, big inhale, loud exhale, 
Find your way to plank. Chaturanga. Into cobra. Ah, child's pose. You hang out right there. So, had the stump of that tree ground, but then I discovered, it's such a discovery, then I discovered that there was another root, huge, it's huge, that's going, you know, kind of under the current deck, and I tried to, I tried to mess with that root. I wedged a shovel under it, I got out a saw, and in, uh, well, in my argument with the root, I stepped backwards, you got it, right into the three-foot hole. Like literally, my leg went straight down and I ended up sitting on the earth one knee bent. So, <clears throat> that made me think of um, a poem I had done a theme on a really long time ago. Perhaps you're familiar with it, it's a great one. It's called, There's a Hole in My Sidewalk by Portia Nelson. And I thought, huh. That is a sign if you haven't, if like, if I need to be hit over the head, that's a sign, if any, to um, bring this poem back out and talk about habits and how we have the power to change them. All right, come on up into the table. That's long enough for you and Balasana. Tuck the toes downward, facing dog. And then walk the hands backwards towards the feet. Come to monkey, I want you to look at your mat. Allow your gaze to go from the mat in front of your feet to the middle of your mat to way out in front. I want you to imagine that I tell you there's a deep hole in the middle of your mat, but you don't believe me and you don't see it. Go ahead, roll your way up. Hands to the heart. Now, if we go ahead and walk our way to the top of the mat, we're gonna hit that hole, stop right in the middle, close your eyes, and we fall in. And it's not going to be your fault, it's going to be mine, right? I told you the hole was there, but you didn't believe me. And so our first instinct is blame, right? Who put the hole there? Who covered it up so I couldn't see it? All right, come on out of that hole, walk forward. <clears throat> Take the arms up, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, monkey, release it down. Roll your way back up, stay at the top of your mat. I'm just turning to face you. Inhale the arms, exhale to the heart. We're gonna widen out the feet. Actually, let's take them <clears throat> to the width, at least the width of the mat or beyond. Come on down here, release the arms. So this poem, there's a hole in the sidewalk, in my sidewalk, is broken up into five chapters. Inhale that left arm up, hold it here. Deep breath in. Exhale the arm down. Inhale the right arm up. Release it down. Reach back for the ankles and pull yourself into that fold. Straighten out the arms as though you're heading to monkey. And come back down. So from here, I want you to plant the hands right in front of you. <clears throat> Bend into the knees. You can step or jump back to plank. Totally up to you. Pay attention to your body. My ankles are a little unhappy today, so I probably won't be jumping back. Uh, drop the feet or the heels to your right. Send that left arm up, side plank, vasisthasana. Take that top arm overhead. Release it back to the earth. Take your vinyasa. Take 
Deep breath in, dog. Back to forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, let it go. Reverse swan dive. Hands to the heart, widen out your stance. Widening out the stance, almost as though we're standing over that invisible hole, that habit. Go ahead, come on down. Chapter one, I walk down the street. Inhale the left arm up. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. Release the arm. I fall in. Take the right arm up. I am lost. I am helpless. Release the right arm. It is not my fault. Soften into your fold. And it takes forever to find a way out. Bend the knees. Take, make your way back to plank. Drop the heels to the left side, right arm up, Vasisthasana. Reach the top arm overhead. Release it to the earth, take your vinyasa. So we can all relate to that first chapter, right? It's not my fault, I am not to blame. I'm lost, I'm helpless. This is all victim mode, right? I don't know how to get out. Breathe here. Send the left leg up behind you, three-legged. And then I want you to bend that knee, come up onto the ball of that back foot and pull the knee to your heart as you come forward into lunge. Yep, take it back, send the leg up, bring it in. Two more. And then back to dog, send that right leg up. Same thing, bend the right knee, lift the heel of the left foot, draw the knee into the heart as you come forward, core plank, send the leg up. Three more. Downward facing dog. Come forward into plank. Chaturanga. Take it to cobra, hold it right here. So that first chapter is also, uh, it loudly screams denial. It is not about me, it is not about me. It is not about me, it is not my fault. I can't fix it, I don't know how, I'm helpless. Take it to child's pose. and then come up into table. So I was kind of thinking not taking it in this direction, but maybe it's best to say it, even though I don't like to put this out there. I find that that first stanza and the rest that will follow correlate very heavily with the COVID stuff. The hole we couldn't see was the virus, right? Take that left arm up. And we all fell in. And there were people out there saying, I warned you, I warned you, we didn't hear it, we didn't see it, we fell in, we feel helpless. There's a lot of blame, right? There's a lot of not knowing how to get out. Release that arm down. Take the right arm up. And truly, if you compare the chapters of this poem with the stages of grief, especially in regards to that situation I just mentioned, drop the right arm down, find downward facing dog. I think we're all gonna be floating in and out of different chapters. 
for my hole in the sidewalk. But ultimately where we would like to be is chapter five. Ah, deep inhale, let it go. Walk the feet all the way back up to the top of the mat. Inhale, monkey, let it go. Roll your way up. Take the shoulders up, back and down. All right, shift that weight into the left foot. We'll try this balance thing again. Pull the right knee in. Option A, stay right here. Option B, cradle the leg. Good job, slowly set that leg down. Ooh, inhale the arms, exhale to the heart, shift the weight into the right foot. When you're ready, draw that left knee in. Option A, stay right here. Option B, cradle. Good job, set that leg down. Inhale the arms. Exhale to the heart. Widen out the feet again. Slowly find your way into your fold. Chapter two. I walk down the street, take the left arm up. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. Release the arm. I, I pretend I don't see it. Take the right arm up. That's so different, isn't it? I pretend I don't see it. Release the arm. I fall in again. Take the hands to the ankles, pull into your fold. I can't believe I'm in this same place, but it isn't my fault. And it still takes a long time to get out. Release the hands, step back to plank. Take your vinyasa. Hold cobra. Soften the shoulders, roll out the neck. So in relation to what is going on, there's a lot of people pretending not to see it. You know who they are. I'm not calling anybody out, no judgment in yoga. I'm just saying that we're all in different stages and that is, that has to be kind of okay. One more breath here. Okay, release down, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. But from that chapter, you can tell we're still in denial. There's still blame because I don't know how to get myself out. Breathe here. Fabulous. All right, let's take that right foot up into the lizard. So to the outside of the right hand. I'm gonna set the back knee down and untuck the foot. Let's just hang here for a second. Let's see how lizard feels. Relax the hips. Maybe close your eyes for a moment. Gauge on a scale of one to 10, how intense the stretch is. So you decide if you want to stay here or if you want to come on down to the forearms. And then, I know you can't see this very well, I'm just going to take my right foot and turn the toes outward to the right. Okay, so from here, this is also an option, you don't have to do it. I'm going to walk my arms to the left. So we're adding a twist here. I turned my toes out. Now I'm going to fall on the outer edge of that foot and let the knee open up a little bit. If that's too much on the hip, don't let the knee open up. If you stayed up into your hands, no problem. Walk your hands over to the left, right? Good 
So remember before I started the poem, I, I was saying that we all have habits that we're unaware of and we'll just notice we're suddenly doing something without having thought about it. So that kind of a habit takes you out of the present moment, right? Go ahead and come back to center, get your hands underneath you. Let's wiggle this leg on over because it's feeling really lucky today to come into pigeon pose. Ooh. Well, let's stay seated in pigeon, yeah? Just make sure that back uh, knee is facing down and the ankles in a straight line. Make sure the hips are level, even that's the most important aspect of this pose. Just hold it right here. And so we can relate this idea of habits to our yoga practice. I think, you know, for me, for me, one of the reasons I do not like yoga practices that are always the same is because it expends so much more of my energy to stay present and stay focused. It becomes a habit and you know it's coming, right? You could say the same thing about Surya Namaskars, sun salutations. Generally, they're the same. We can add in variations, but generally they're the same and the mind knows the next move. And so the mind then has this ability to do the poses while still wandering. And so again, then our practice is not in the present moment. And so, um, yeah, for me, I like to keep you guys guessing because then you have to stick with me, but there are certain things that are repetitive, right? Like a vinyasa and that is on you. That is up to you to find how you can stay present and focus on the transitions rather than letting the mind take off and go, I got this. I don't have to pay attention until she gets to something else, right? How are we doing here? Okay, let's replant the hands. Tuck the back toes, lift that leg, step it back downward, facing dog. Whew. Walk it out a little bit. And then find your stillness, close your eyes. And we're just noticing you know, the, the right leg got to come forward in lizard. It got to move across in pigeon. Does the right leg or hip feel any different from the left? Okay, forward fold. Take it to monkey. Let it go. Roll your way up, bring the shoulders up with you. Exhale them back and down. Widen out the feet. Inhale the arms. Exhale to the heart. Come on down into your fold. Chapter three. I walk down the same street. Take the left arm up. Hold it right here. Deep breath in. Exhale the arm down. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk, right arm up. I see it's there. I still fall in, it's a habit, but my eyes are open. Release that right arm down. Grab onto the ankles, pull yourself deeper. I know where I am, it is my fault. I get out immediately. Bring the hands to the earth in front of you. Bend into the knees, step back to plank. Take your vinyasa, stay present. And then that left foot is coming forward for lizards. Set the back knee down and tuck the foot. Hang out here, let's gauge how the stretch is. So that chapter is about awareness, accountability, and I think growth because it is clearly stated. I see the hole. I get it. I fall in. It's a habit. I'm aware of it. It is um, it's a, taking ownership, right? All right. Decide if you want to come down onto your forearms or if you want to stay um, weighted up in your arms. That's totally fine.
So again, I'm gonna just turn my left foot out to the left a little bit, and I'm gonna walk my arms to the right. You could be on your forearms or on your hands. On back to center, get up under the hands, wiggle that foot all the way across for pigeon. Take your time settling in. Whew. And again, we're staying seated. Do your, your alignment check. Hips are level, which means you're not tipped into the left hip. The right knee is face down on the mat. It's not face down, it's knee down. And then your ankle is straight. If you can't keep the ankle straight, you could tuck the toes. So we're holding right here. Deep in the breath. Is your mind wandering just because we're holding the pose? Can you stay present? You got this, not much longer. Okay, hands in front of you. Tuck the back toes, lift that leg, step it back to dog. Walk it out. Let's close the eyes for a moment and just kind of see how the legs and hips feel. As you consciously walk your feet up the mat to forward fold, see the hole in the mat. It's okay if you step in it. We, we've acknowledged it. We are, we're owning our, our choices, but we see it. And that is called evolving. Ah, forward fold. Take it to monkey. Let it go. Roll your way up. Bring the shoulders up with you. Take them back and down. Inhale the arms. Exhale to the heart. Widen out the feet. Come on down into your fold. Chapter four. This time right arm up first because the other three times we did the left arm and I don't want you falling into a habit. Right arm up. I walk down the same street. Now hold it here for a moment. Rock your weight back into the heels. Just let the hips gently fall back. If you need to move the front arm out farther to hold you, you can. Good job, come back to center, release the right arm. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. Send the left arm up. Hold it here. Tip the weight back. Come back to center, release the arm. I walk around it. Grab the ankles, pull yourself deeper. Plant your hands, step your way back to plank. Ah, chaturanga. Into cobra. Now let's come down, slide the hands further back. Yeah, my wrists are right below my elbows. And it might feel a little uncomfortable, but you're gonna want them there. Tops of the feet to the earth, they are pushing down. We are gonna lift up into upward facing dog. So hips and thighs off the ground. Breathe. Now start to lift the hips and untuck the feet to downward facing. Deep inhale, loud exhale. Good job. Walk your feet forward. When you see the hole in the middle of your mat, 
walk your feet around it. That chapter is all about choice and action. Inhale halfway. Let it go. Roll your way up. Shoulders again coming with you to massage out the neck. Take them back and down. Whew. Inhale the arms. Exhale to the heart. Widen out the feet. Come on down into your fold for chapter five. Take the left arm up. Exhale it down. Right arm up. Exhale it down. Roll your way back up to standing. Inhale the, <coughs> excuse me, inhale the arms. Exhale to the heart. Chapter five is, I walk down another street. That's victory. That's, um, that reminds me of, you know, the Sanskrit word jai. That is empowerment. That is taking control, making changes and choices. Yeah? So I asked you, what habit would you want to change if you could? And do you see that there's only five short chapters to you getting from I want to change that habit to it's done? Bring the legs back in towards each other. Drop the arms. Inhale them up. A little back bend here, and then let's come on down into our fold. Find monkey. Ah, perfect. So coming into your fold, I'm just backing up a little because Ganesh is kind of right there in front of me. He is not a soft place to land. We're going to bend into the knees. Yeah, I'm going to widen out my feet just a little bit. Lift up onto the balls of the feet and set the knees against the backs of my arms just underneath where the armpit would be, right? And so just rocking forward and back. Just playing. Good job. The alternative here is to take the knees wide, grab onto the upper arms and rock forward and back. And then we are actually going to just sit all the way down. See, you thought we were headed somewhere, but we might get there. And then just sit in here for a moment. Let's bring the forearms down to the earth and find our anchored boat. So shins are parallel to the ground. You can flex the feet or point. I leave that totally up to you. Make sure the back is straight so we haven't sunk and we're not over exaggerated in the arch. Ah, squeeze the legs together, drop them halfway down to the left. Come back up. Halfway down to the right. Fortunate again for me, the wall's right there. And back to center, halfway down to the left. You're still breathing, right? Hold it there, keep breathing. Drop another couple inches, don't let go, don't sacrifice the spine. Come all the way back up. Just scooch over so I don't hit the wall. Drop the knees halfway to the right. Hold it. Keep breathing. Drop the knees a couple more inches. Come all the way back up. Set the legs down. Now, I want you to come all the way down onto your back for a moment. Stretch out the legs. You can rest your hands on your abdomen. Close your eyes. And then go ahead and take the legs on the cobbler, soles of the feet together, knees wide. I want you to notice how the hips feel because, you know, pigeon and, and flying pigeon and supine pigeon and lizard, um, we work the hips quite a bit. I just want you to notice, do they feel a little sore? Are they a little overworked? I have a good hip strengthener for you, but I just wanted you to be aware first. Okay. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and come on to your left side. I'm not saying this is gonna feel good. I said it was a hip strengthener. So I'm just warning you in advance. Go ahead and prop up the head with the left arm. 
Okay, the key to this here is taking your right thumb and digging it in to the space. It would be, it's not the hip bone. You're, you're coming down more. You're finding muscle. You'll find it. If it's sore, you'll find it. Find the sorest spot you can. Keep the thumb there and push like nobody's business. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Okay, flex the feet. Keep pushing. Push, 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 push. Bring the right knee in towards you. Drop it to touch the floor in front of you. Keep pushing with your thumb. And then straighten out this right leg. Take it behind you and up just a little. Keep pushing. So the key here is what the right hand is doing. Pull the knee in. Touch the floor in front of you. Take it back out. Exhale. Bring it in. Exhale. Bring it in. Exhale, keep going. So anytime that you find you have hip pain, give this a try. Technically, you should add this into your daily um, stretches, but we're human. And if you're like me, your memory uh, likes to forget certain things. All right, one more. Come on, keep pushing, push, 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 push. If it doesn't hurt, you don't have the right spot. Let it go. Woo, drop your head. Just relax here for a second. Now straighten out that bottom leg. Reflex the bottom foot. That's our support system. Go ahead and bend that top leg. Bring the foot behind you. Grab on with the right hand. And what we want to see here is can we get the thighs close to each other? I know for many people, and especially if you're tight, to grab onto the foot, you've got to open the hip up to get to it, right? But can we lower that back down? And if the answer is no, it's okay. I'm just telling you where we would like to head. I just don't want this to be a habit without you knowing it, right? So trying to get the thighs close to each other and then pulling that heel in, can it touch the glute? Maybe not. Breathe. I want you to take the top, uh, the top, take the right hand onto the very top of the right foot so we can pull the right shoulder back and get the elbow facing behind us. Might as well work on the shoulder at the same time, right? Deep breath in, hold it. Big exhale. Let go of that leg. Oh, roll onto your stomach for a moment. Reverse Shavasana. Now here with the eyes closed, do you feel a difference in the hips? For me, my right hip feels a lot looser. And weirdly enough, it feels like it's a lot closer to the earth. I mean, I know my hips are both touching the ground, but it feels that way. Um, and since it feels so much better, we need to flip over and do the other side. So. Come on to your right side. Go ahead, prop up the head. Straight body, flex the feet. That bottom foot again is flexed to help hold us here. All right, left hand, use that thumb. Find the spot, the muscle that's really sore or tender, sensitive. Oh yeah, I just found it, it's not good. Okay, squeeze. Pull the left knee in, touch the floor. Straighten that leg, reach it behind you and up. And two, you're still breathing. This is your exhale. Inhale, three, send it out. Keep going. Keep pushing with that thumb. I know it hurts right now, it'll feel good when you're done. And our habit is to loosen up, isn't it? Don't you have to keep taking your focus there and going, wait a minute, I was pushing harder a second ago. Keep pushing. You're almost there. Last one, finish it off. Oh, relax, come on down, just close your eyes.
Okay. Support with the bottom leg. Bring that top foot behind you. Grab it with the left hand. See if you can settle the thighs towards each other. Heel towards the glute. Pull the left shoulder back. Left elbow facing behind you. Deep breath in, hold it. Loud exhale, let go of the foot. Oh, roll onto your stomach. Reverse Shavasana, close your eyes and just notice. Bring the legs in a little closer together. Reach the arms down alongside you, palms to the earth. You can just rest your chin on the mat for a moment or your forehead. Go ahead, bend the knees, flex the feet. And then as though the fingers were crawling away from you, see if you can lift the head and the heart. You're not holding the breath, keep breathing. That might be your habit you've noticed in yoga that you hold the breath a lot. So if you were to try to stay present, then you could focus on your ability to breathe, right? Okay, lift a little bit higher, deep inhale, exhale, come all the way down, oh, roll onto your back. Hug the knees in, then rock it out. Oh my gosh, can you feel those spots where you dug your thumb? Whew. When you're ready, go ahead, set the feet down. Ah, get those shoulder blades underneath you and walk your way into Shavasana, corpse pose. Grab any props you want along the way, a blanket perhaps, and close your eyes. So it's not easy to, it's not easy to call out to ourselves where in our life we are in victim mode because when we're in victim mode, we are so heavily engaged in not being able to see. Um, you know, there's a lot of blame involved. There's a lot of denial. And to get from there to acknowledgement is huge, right? That is such an achievement. And, you know, if you've you know, made that step or you're going to work towards making that step with that habit you want to get rid of, you should applaud yourself because once the eyes are open, right? It's just like the palm said, I saw the hole, but I still stepped into it, but I knew it was there. That is a huge achievement. So I want you to take a deep breath in. Loud exhale. And just let everything go. I want you to just settle into Shavasana as if nothing else existed or mattered. I'll come back and get you.
begin to follow my voice back into the present, deepening the breath, feeling that breath move down through the arms, through the body, especially feeling the breath in the hips, we worked them, and then down the legs, into the feet. And when you're ready, invite some movement back into the body, whatever that means to you, whatever feels like it needs to stretch. And then just peacefully roll to a side in a fetal position. And then when you're ready, slowly make your way back up. Deep breath in through the nose. Loud exhale through the mouth. Inhale both arms up. Exhale the hands to the heart. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me, you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste.